Now in this final video on Gaussian processes, we'll make some remarks and then we'll summarize. You might have heard that Gaussian processes are a non-parametric model. But we do have parameters, right? We have the noise scale and, and in the squared exponential kernel we have L and sigma. But these are hyperparameters and do not have anything to do with the model being parametric or non-parametric. So in a parametric model, the number of parameters is fixed before training. So a neural network would be a great example, because once we fix the number of layers and neurons per layer, then we have to find the number of weights and biases that we have to train. In a non-parametric model, the number of parameters grows with the number of training samples. So for Gaussian processes, we have the covariance matrix that keeps growing as we add more data points. A big advantage of non-parametric models is that they often require no or little training. You just need the training data and then basically straight go from there. But there are also drawbacks. For example, you also have to store all of the training data. When using Gaussian processes, you have to put a lot of thought about choosing the mean function and the covariance function. And when you choose the squared exponential kernel, you also have to decide which length scale and which output variance to use. Here you can see four different settings for both L and sigma. And each figure shows again 10 draws from the posterior distribution. This is what we have seen before. With the shorter length scale, the influence of one data point to the left and to the right is not that big. If we increase the length scale, it gets a bit bigger. The drawn functions also get a bit smoother. On the other hand, we don't have as much variance anymore, which might cause overfitting problems. If we make the output variance smaller, then this interval get smaller and all of the functions will fit into a smaller frame and not deviate from the mean as much as before. All right, now to summarize, in this series we talked about Gaussian processes. They are a probabilistic model that give us a measure of uncertainty about our output, not only specific output values. They are capable of fitting arbitrary functions so they are not restricted to, for example, a linear function or something. We talked about how mean and covariance function are a choice that you have to make. And that this is really also where you can include domain knowledge. This is somewhat both a weakness and a strength of Gaussian processes, that you are very free to choose the covariance function as long as it is a kernel. But it might be hard to find one where you'll get good performance on your data. Lastly, we discussed how to do inference with Gaussian processes in the noise-free and in the noisy case. There were some things that we didn't talk about. Gaussian processes can also be used for classification, but that's a bit more involved than what we want to look at here. Then the hyperparameters of the covariance function, such as for the squared or exponential kernel, for example, or the noise can also be learned. And that's a nice advantage of having a probabilistic model here because we can just maximize the marginal likelihood and then get an optimal setting for our hyperparameters. We also haven't discussed how to really handle large data sets. There are two problems that arise when we want to use Gaussian processes for large data sets. One is of course storage of the data, but that happens in other cases as well. And the other and main problem is that we have to invert a very large covariance matrix. An inversion, as you know, is a quite expensive operation. Dealing with large data sets is possible by using something called sparse Gaussian processes. And this has been a quite active direction in research as well.